Hi, this is Nick Williford, Hermanos Brilakis, presenting case 201 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case that had difficulties with treating an LAD diagonal bifurcation. The patient presented with angina and had a coronary CT screening test. This is the FFR CT, showing significant hemodynamically significant lesions in the LAD with a distal FFR CT of 0.72 and a significant drop between the proximal and the mid LAD at the bifurcation of a diagonal branch. One of the ways to plan PCI is to use the PCI planner in which uh, the FFR CT values are plotted against the vessel and then by pressing into the circles, one can virtually place a stand and determine the length of the stand and see what is going to be the post-PCI physiology. And what we're seeing here is the post-PCI FFR distal to the stand is going to be 0.87 and the same for the diagonal branch. We then have the maximum intensity projection showing some calcium but not too bad at the bifurcation of the LAD and the diagonal. And then we also look at the plaque composition and it's mainly soft plaque with some calcium. One could go very long to 37 millimeters to cover from very proximally the LAD to uh, all the way to the mid uh, LAD. And this is the coronary angiogram. And as from CT, we do have disease in the LAD. There appears to be a significant disease just proximal to the bifurcation of the large diagonal branch. And there's some disease also after the takeoff of the diagonal branch. On some views, the origin of the diagonal seems to be more significant, which will be important, as we'll discuss in a second. And on the spider view, uh, the same thing was visualized with LAD diagonal bifurcation. So we wired the LAD and then had some difficulty wiring with a workhorse guide wire into the diagonal branch, but then assumed black relatively easily went into the diagonal branch. We did intravascular ultrasound in the LAD, which um, also showed some disease distally with mainly soft plaque, and then uh, mainly soft plaque at the area of the bifurcation with some disease proximally. So very minimal calcification, exactly as shown on CT. We predilated with a 2.75 millimeter balloon, and we should have been more concerned about the sluggish flow into the diagonal branch. Uh, but we thought that actually the flow might improve if we stand in the main vessel, because we thought there might be some dissection proximal to the diagonal takeoff. So we placed a 275 by 26 millimeter DES. This is based on both CT and IVUS imaging. On CT, we just upsized slightly. We were measuring about 2.5 distal reference, so we upsized to 275. And unfortunately, what we're seeing later on is that instead of having improved flow in the diagonal, we have actually have lost flow in the diagonal. The patient did have some chest discomfort and ST segment changes, so clearly this was an important branch. The next step usually is to try to rewire the diagonal branch and then perform balloon dilatation. But the problem we had here is that we were unable to advance the guide wire. Tried another Sion Black, we could not get it through. So to relieve the ischemia, we ended up using a small 1.5 millimeter balloon over the gel wire ballooning in the diagonal, and after doing that, we restored a good TM3 undergrade flow, and the EKG changes and the chest discomfort both resolved. So the question is, what to do now? And once again, the ideal thing would be to try to wire inside the diagonal through the stent strut, and then use another stent, maybe using the culotte fashion. But several techniques, including a reversed wire technique, uh, did not work. Uh, we put a knuckled wire in, both with and without a dual lumen microcatheter. We also used a dual lumen microcatheter trying to get uh, inside the diagonal without success. We even used a small blocking balloon just proximal to the diagonal, also without success. And we used an angulated Supercross 120 microcatheter, several wires, including polymer jacketed, a Pilot 200, and another Sion Black. But unfortunately, no matter what we did, we were unable 
to advance a guide wine in the dining room brands. So what to do next? And one of the solutions is to do the so-called reverse crust technique, in which we advance a balloon over the tailed guide wire inside the diagonal branch, inflate it to crush the LED stand, and then place another stand from the LED all the way inside the diagonal branch. So this is a 2.75 by 22 millimeter drag eluting stand, which is placed from the LED into the diagonal. And uh, we confirm good positioning and successfully deployed the stand, which uh, provide a nice result. We now have TM3 flow into the diagonal, TM3 flow into the LED. But of course, we need to rewire the segment of the LED and do a kissing balloon inflation. Before doing that, we did the proximal optimization. But then we did have some difficulty advancing um, uh, equipment into the LED. We're eventually able to advance another guide wire through the stand struts, but then a balloon would not go. How to overcome this problem? We used a short six millimeter balloon into the diagonal, and then we were able to advance our balloon into the mid LED and did a kissing balloon inflation. And this provided a nice result. We did have TM3 flow into the LED. Although in geographically, there was still some concern here whether we have some area of under expansion or covered dissection into the mid LED after the takeoff of the diagonal branch. And we do see the crushed stand uh, on top here of the LED, crushed by the subsequently placed diagonal stand. To check on this, we did intravascular ultrasound coming back from the LED. And we had a good expansion distally. And uh, as we come closer to the diagonal, we also had a, a decent result without any significant under expansion of the LED stand. To be further sure, um, we decided to do some coronary physiology. So we did place a pressure wire. It wasn't perfect, 0 0.92. There was some step up that was mainly proximal to the stand. So we decided to not um, do any further PCI. So this is the final result, and the patient did have a good recovery after the procedure. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that when there is significant plaque burden, we did have a lot, a lot of soft plaque at the bifurcation, uh, consider the risk of um, potentially losing the side branch and maybe doing a preparation by predilating the side branch. What was essential and saved this case is that we had a wire placed into the diagonal branch. If we had not that wire, we probably would be would have been unable to rewire it and would have lost a fairly significant side branch. So having a protection wire can be extremely important. What to do if we have a side branch occlusion and we cannot rewire the side branch through the stent struts? One solution is to balloon over the gelled guide wire, and this technique did restore some undergrade flow in our pace. We did use various techniques, including an angulated microcatheter, a dual lumen microcatheter, a blocking balloon, and uh, uh, the reversed guide wire technique, but unfortunately we were still unable to advance a guide wire into the diagonal branch, and that's why we resorted to the technique called reverse crush. This is a technique we don't commonly use because we're essentially crushing the main vessel stand, but in this case that was the only way to achieve flow into both the diagonal and the lady. Thank you.